Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ching Chuan Lai. Uh, I'm a PhD student from the Gonoblet EFA. And thanks, Professor Yi Prashet, to give me this opportunity to present my PhD work in this amazing symposium in this local place, College de France, uh, to, pres to present my PhD work. Today, the topic of my presentation is phase transformation controlled architectures is in steel alloys. It is about the design of the graded martensite phase in the ferrite martensite steel phase steels. Here is the outline of my presentation. First, I will introduce why we are interested in the graded DP steel. Then I will present the results on microstructure and also on mechanical properties. And finally, the conclusions and the perspective will be drawn. So, motivation. We are interested in the steel for making cars, and the key issue is formability. The essence of formability are work hardening and damage resistance. A good combination between the strengths, work hardening and the damage resistance is still a big challenge for high strength steels. And most of the work actually is to move this banana curve in the space of strength and formability in this direction. But when we want to imp when we improve the formability, there are always problems. For example, if we want good work hardening, we want a strong martensite. But when we want to improve the damage resistance, actually it is well known that it is the hardest contrast between ferrite and martensite that is the origin of the damage occurrence. No matter what kind of damage mechanism is, such as interfacial decohesion between ferrite and martensite, or martensite cracking or lacking, depending on the properties of the martensite. This is a micrograph for the damage by the martensite cracking, and this is the micrograph of the damage by interfacial decohesion. Principally, if we have hard martensite to guarantee the work hardening, we will sacrifice ductility at the same time. That is why we want we have the idea of the graded martensite phase. This graph is our imaginary, actually it is our dream. The matrix is a ferrite, and then this inclusion is martensite phase, but it is not homogeneous. We, we want a soft layer at the interface and a hard core in the middle. We design a soft layer at the interface is to delay the damage nucleation by decreased hard, local hardness contrast and to increase the local ductility of martensite, especially if the the damage initiated by the martensite crack from the face boundary. We designed hard core is to guarantee the work hardening. The idea is quite tricky because we have to introduce the hardness gradient within the face, let's say in two of two micrometer. So to answer this question, we have to think about what controls the hardness of martensite. Let's refer to a um, very early result of Morris Cohen in 1962. This result shows us that the hardness of martensite is very sensitive to the carbon content up to 0.7%. This result tells us an opportunity that if we can introduce the carbon profile within the martensite phase, then there is a possibility to introduce the corresponding hardness gradient within the martensite phase also. It is a kind of graded martensite. But how to fabricate it? We have we have proposed an approach. It is to start by the ferrite carbide mi uh, mixture. Then we integrate co it. So carbide will dissolve and austenite will form around carbide. And normally, as shown in this graph, that there will be a carbon profile within the austenite. Thanks to the calculation of discharge software, we can calculate the carbon profile within the austenite during phase transformation. Here, in this case, we can see that there ex really exists a carbon profile within austenite. But the problem is that the carbon content in the middle and at the interface is not, are not very different. The difference is less than is just about 0.1% of carbon. Uh, the room to play with is quite narrow. But it is found that if we keep parts of the carbide not dissolved, there exists a very significant carbon profile within austenite. Now we, we refer to here the carbon content in the middle and the carbon content at the interface. 
is much more different. The difference more than 0.3% of carbon. So the room to play with is much larger. Then we propose to design with this and dissolve carbon within the mountain site. It is kind of cautious architecture. So there might be a possibility of having a low carbon content at the shell at the interface, but keeping a high carbon content in the middle. Also, from the Dictra calculation, we have an idea to develop the reference alloys to test whether the carbon profile can have an effect on the mechanical properties. It is a game on the annealing temperature. As shown in this graph, it is noticed that if we increase the annealing temperature, we can decrease the carbon content at the interface. At the same time, the austenite uh, formation kinetics will be accelerated. Then, with this line of reference, we can have different carbon profiles, uh, including the carbon content at the interface and the average carbon content within the mountain site. There is another advantage of this line of reference that is, since they divided from the same ferrite carbide mixture, after intercritical engineering, they will share the same microstructure features. So the goal of this work is to first is to experimentally process graded DP steel and then to characterize, to test, understand and to model the effect of carbon profile on the mechanical behavior and to prove that this can be a novel way of making trade-off between different mechanical properties. So microstructure. We start from cobalt mountain site and then we temper it for a long time. This is three days to have coarse carbide. The carbides can be several hundred nanometer. Um, this is the composition. With the 3.5 marginals, we cannot increase the, uh, the, te the tempering temperature further to have coarse carbide. And now what we have now is, we have got coarse carbide enriched with marginals. The marginals content within the carbide can be higher than even higher than 25%. And the distribution of carbides is banded due to the manganese margin segregation. The recrystallization and grain growth of ferrite have occurred after tempering. With this initial microstructure, we can study the kinetics of austenite formation. This is the result uh, in the atometer. And similar trends as the prediction of Dictra that the austenite formation kinetics is very sensitive to the temperature. Here in this case, uh, this is the uh, annealing, uh, the austenite formation kinetics at 700 degrees C. It can last for a long time, but if we just increased the annealing temperature by 40 degrees C, the austenite formation can be finished in, in several minutes. It means that the temperature window for practical heat treatment in conventional furnace is quite level here in this case is about 50 degrees C. Remember again that we Increase. I increase the annealing temperature is to decrease the carbon content at the interface, but the austenite formation at high temperature is very fast. This sets an upper limit in our practical trial. Then I characterize the microstructure I've got. This is the microstructure annual at 740 degrees C, and with a relatively small volume fraction of mountain site. The mountain side island is distributed along the ferrite grain size like a leg lace and then we observe it with a, a larger magnification we can see after little etching we can see the features of retain carbide within the mountain site very clearly and as to the microstructure with more volume fraction of mountain site here this case is about 35 percent we can uh, the, observe that uh, due to the relatively high magnetic content the bending the bending structure is very obvious and with the wall, uh, high magnification we can see that even with uh, a larger mountain site content there are still a lot of carbide within the mountain site. Under the TM we can see the core shell architecture more clearly. This is the ferrite matrix. There are some carbide within the ferrite matrix and transformed to austenite and this is the mountain site island. These particles are carbide. Occasionally, there are more than one carbide within a single mountain side island. So far, it is believed that there are enough proof that we have fabricated the core shell architecture. And also, uh, I've developed 
the reference alloys at different annealing temperature and also with different volume fraction of martensite. Remind you again that we, I played with annealing temperature is to manipulate the carbon profile within the martensite. So, how is the mechanical properties of such kind of braided deep steels? The first thing I should do is to prove that the annealing temperature has an effect on the properties of martensite. I do this by the Lando indentation to, to measure the local hardness of the faces. This is the SM image with the QBSD contrast. Fortunately, I can distinguish it ferrite and martensite. These are the Lando indents. And then I probe the evolution of Lando hardness of martensite with the penetration depth. We attention that due to the composite effect of, uh, of the soft ferrite matrix, we cannot use larger penetration depth. But fortunately, well, it, well, it, with the moderate penetration depth of about 40 nanometer, it is proved that the hardness of the martensite is decreased uh, when we increase the annual temperature. Actually, it is what we are probing is the average effect, and this agrees with the prediction of the trust simulation. And then I do the tensile test to probe the macro mechanical behavior. This described is uh, the evolution of the tensile strength with the volume fraction of martensite. It is observed that both this is the uh, materials at the different annual temperature. It is observed that both of the, of, of the reference alloys have the same linear relationship between the strength and the volume fraction of martensite. But well, as to the case with the larger volume fraction of martensite, the, the difference comes, comes out. The, for us to this QT700, we can, you can see that even with less martensite, it can have better strength level and even similar <coughs> strength level with the, with the QT740 with the more martensite. It means that the martensite at the low annual temperature has better strengthening efficiency. As to the evolution of the uniform elongation, uh, generally speaking, the QT700 has slightly better uniform elongation. And as to the fracture string, you can see that very similar trend as the strength, uh, strength and the martensite content is that the fracture string where with low martensite content, they, they both share the same linear relationship. But as to the relatively large martensite content is that for the QT740, even with more martensite, it can have better fracture strength than the QT700. It means that the properties of the DP steel can be changed by the annealing temperature. And we use this graph again. We change the annealing temperature is to manipulate the carbon profile within the martensite. Now, as to the sample, annual at lower temperature, it can have higher average carbon content, especially the carbon content at the interface. Then we can understand why the martensite at the lower temperature, annual temperature can have better strengthening efficiency. And as to the sample, annual at low temperature, uh, at the annual at higher temperature, uh, there it has a lower average carbon content, especially the carbon content at the interface. That it is easy to accept the fact that the fracture string of QT740 can be better than QT700 even with more martensite. To support this analysis, we need the proof from experiments. Then I do the detailed investigation of the damage behavior to explain how and why the fracture string can be improved in the QT740. I selected these three reference alloys. Let's first look, have a look at these two. This is a proposal at 740 degrees C, but with different martensite content. The trend is that the both, uh, all of the tensile properties are very sensitive to the martensite content. With more martensite, we can have the higher strength level, lower uniform elongation, and lower fracture strain. But it is interesting to compare these two. These two for the QT700 with less martensite, it can have very similar strength level, higher uniform elongation, but lower, um, uh, just, just the same, just the same fracture strain. Then we, we compare the, the difference in the damage accumulation. First, let's compare the black line and the red line first. They are both of at 740, but with different 
Martin said content. The, the, the change is in the damage nucleation. If we increase the Martin side fraction, we decrease the damage nucleation strength. But let's have a look at this blue line. It is a QT700 with less Martin side than this. It has as low damage nucleation strength as that one of QT740. And also, even further, it has a higher damage nucleation rate. So this result uh, can tell us the fact that the fracture strain is uh, of QT740 is improved by delaying damage nucleation. Uh, with this fact, it's not enough to understand why the fracture strain is improved. And then I do the damage and fracture observation for, to find out the mechanism. This is the observation of void coalescence and the fracture. First, we can observe the void coalescence by the shear localization, and this will lead to the dimples on the fracture surface. And also, we can observe the void linkage along the tensile axis, and this will lead to delamination. Actually, we can observe the features of delamination at the fracture surface. If we refer to the brown Embry criterion, we can estimate that this kind of delamination can be can be important in ductile fracture because if the size of the elongated defect is large, then the critical width, the critical distance between the defect can be quite large for the final instability to occur. Actually, from the fracture surface, we can observe this kind of proof. Here is the delamination. Here is the delamination. This is a shear band indicating the final instability. And notice that this is the scale bar. The width of the, mat of, of the shear band is more than 20 micrometer. But what we are interested in the damage nucleation. Uh, this is notice the position of the carbide, and which is quite easy to very easy to observe the mountain side cracking. And sometimes we can observe the, the, the mountain side crack in an lantern side manner. But since our design is in the green scale, this is not enough to, to prove that our idea of graded button size is working, but fortunately, uh, we can observe, here is the, for the micrograph for the damage of the small mountain side island. We can observe that the crack initiated from the edge or from the green, from the face boundary. And as to the big mountain side island, or I refer to, I prefer to say it is a mountain side band, it is easily to observe this kind of defect. It is the crack initiated from the face boundary and also, the, we can, we can, it's obvious that the cracks is very blunt, indicating that the local ductility of the Martin site can be very good. And we can, I can also observe another kind of mechanism. It is by the decohesion, uh, the triple junction. And this, this, damp, this defect uh, doesn't grow as a void by the dis, by dislocation emission, but as instead as a crack along the ferrite grain boundaries and parallel to the tensile axis, which is very interesting. So now we have an idea how this, my, this graded DP steel is broken, and then maybe it's time to discuss why the carbon profile can have an effect on the damage behavior. We have observed two kinds of damage mechanism, mountain side cracking and the cohesion at the triple junction. As to the Damage by mountain side cracking, it, since it, is, it can be initiated from the edge, with the mountain side profile, we decreased the local hardness contrast. And also, what is important is that we increase the local ductility, then we can, it is possible to decrease, to delay the damage nucleation. And as to the decohesion at the triple junction, with the carbon profile, it is possible to to decrease the local hardness contrast and then to decrease the consequential strain partitioning and stretch concentration, especially at the triple junction. So far, now I propose that the idea of graded mountain size should work better when the carbon content at the interface is low enough and, the th and we have to consider the problem of the scale. The thickness of the soft layer is large enough. Actually, for the engineering materials, most of them are not in equilibrium state. There must be some kind of composition profile, but in, impos impossible for all of them are useful. We have to consider the, both the problem of content and also the scale 
of the profile. Now, uh, I have the graded button site, and then the result proved that it can be a way to make a trade-off between the strength, work hardening, and the fracture string. Then, well, to fit the, to the topic of the symposium today, I have to consider in the material space that's how is the situation in the filling gap. Then, I compare the, uh, the data in the space of the strength and ductility. Notice that now the variables include both the property of the mountain site and also the volume fraction of the mountain site. It is interesting to find that in the space of the tensile strength and the fracture string, both of the reference alloys share the same relationship. And in the space of uniform elongation and tensile strength, it is surprising to, 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 see, uh, to observe that the QT700, which ended at lower temperature with a less significant carbon profile, uh, has better combination of uh, strength and uniform elongation. So the things occurred in the opposite direction as I imagined. <laughs> but I'm not surprised because this gives us some indication of the knowledge and uh, about DP steel. That is the benefit of use martin, a strong mountain site. The first point is that mountain site is strong but not so brittle as uh, ceramic. And then the second point is that with uh, just both all, all the strengths, uniform integration are uh, and the fracture strengths are sensitive to the mountain site content. If we have a stronger mountain site, then we can use less to keep the strength level, but with less mountain site, it is easier to have a good uniform elongation and a good fracture string. So far, in, our, in my effort, the volume fraction of mountain side is still the first order effect, but the game is not over yet. There is still a possibility to find a more significant carbon profile to make the mountain side property the first order effect. The game is not over yet. So, conclusion. An approach to the graded DP steel has been designed based on Dick Trout calculation. And the model microstructure was achieved experimentally. And the mechanical properties of the graded steels have been changed by annual temperature, which manipulates the carbon profile within the mountain site. This result showed a novel way of making trade off between strands, work hardening, and fracture resistance. And also, I have a plan for the future. Work. I'm always one, uh, wondering to use the seams or even nano seam to probe the carbon profile, and it would be nice to relate the damage occurrence to the chemical heterogeneity. And that it might be interesting to, high, uh, to design some experiment to highlight the modification of damage nucleation, like tensile test at low temperature or with high stress triaxiality. And since the, it is a graded interface, it might be interesting to design experiments to study the behavior of interfacial decohesion. I propose that compression is to avoid the mountain side cracking. As said in the last slide, uh, I propose to, it might be possible, still possible, to try a more significant carbon profile that can be achieved by trying a higher enduring temperature but the heat treatment will be very, very challenging. If we increase the annual temperature, let's say to 780, the austenite formation can be finished in several seconds. Finally, the FEM calculation will be very useful to, to study quantitative the effect of the soft laser, soft laser on the mechanical properties. Thank you for your attention.